Today we are going to see how we can use on app trigger and send an email when a new row has been added into Google Sheets. Hello and welcome to day four of the NA10 series. In the previous video, we saw how we can automate with form submission, wherein the form was created within NA10 platform. Next up, let's see how can we have a trigger which is coming from external source. It could be when a new email has been received in our Gmail account or a new row has been added into our Google Sheets or you could think of any other platforms like Airtable, Slack or anything. As we are in the initial phase, we will look at something that most of us have access to and that's Google Sheets. So in today's video, what we are going to cover is when a new row has been added to Google Sheets, an email confirmation will go to the user. So let's quickly check how this automation works. So I'm going to create a new workflow and let me name this as Google Sheets to Gmail. So we will click on add the first step and here in the second video, we did trigger manually. And in the last video, we did on form submission. Now we are going to use on app event and we have to select one of the apps from here. So we will go with Google Sheets. The reason again being uh, so that most of us have access to it. We don't have to create a new account. We don't have to pay for it. We can all learn with some simple examples like this. You could also try it out with Airtable or uh, any similar platforms. So we have three triggers on row added, on row updated, on row added or updated. So this will be triggered only when a new row has been added. This will be triggered only when a new row has been updated. And this will be triggered when a new row has been added or updated. So let's go with on row added. Now I'll have to connect my Google Sheets. So I'll click on create new credentials. Again, OAuth method, I'll select the account and it is asking us for all the access like it did last time. I'll select all, I'll click on continue. Connection successful and account connected. Let me just click on close. Now with Google Sheets, how it works is it keeps polling, right? So every minute it keeps checking if there is a new row or not, right? So we can change this to every hour, every day, every week, every month, or every X number of days, or we can also make it as custom. Now, if you want the email to be triggered or any action to be triggered, as soon as the new record is added, then keep it to every minute. But this also means that every minute keeps polling, right? So if it could be done on every hour, then that will be great because you don't have to poll every minute. Rather, you just poll it 24 times a day. For now, I'll make it as every minute. And uh, we have add poll time here, right? So we could also make it two things. One is every minute and every hour, right? Or you could make it as like every week on a particular day and every month on a particular day and so on and so forth, okay? So I'll delete this. We already have one that's good enough. Now document from list or by URL or by ID. Let me quickly create a new Google Sheets using sheets.new. Let me call it as edit an automation test. Um, so I can actually take this link from here and mention this as by URL and give the URL over here. Now sheet, what is the sheet that you want, right? Again, from list or by URL or by ID. If you click on choose, now we have three options from list, by URL or by ID. I'll just copy this URL and make this as by URL, paste the URL over here. And once I do that, sheet name, that is basically the sheet. So from list or by URL or by ID. If you click on choose, then you can see all the sheets that are available. Sheet one is the only sheet that we have. So I'll select that. Trigger on row added, row updated or added or updated. Let's go with up added. And we have a few options like data location on sheet, value render, uh, date time render and so on and so forth. So I'll just leave those things. We don't need that as of now. And what I'll do is I'll add a few columns here like and let's say name, email and 
phone number okay so date and time let's say 12 12 2012 and 10 00 okay name i'll add it as teshek day email could be avcd at with 7.com and phone number okay now i'll go back to this one and click on fetch test event so based on the columns that we have it will fetch the information as you can see datum time is fetched the name the email and the phone number is fetched now once i'm done with this i'll click on anywhere outside and this is ready i'll just drag it and drop it here now we'll go to actions right the action in this case could be uh sending email via gmail again the reason why i'm using uh gmail or outlook is because we all have access to it and we can test it out this could be used on any other applications if you have access to slack then you could send a slack message you if you have access to whatsapp cloud then you can send a whatsapp message and so on and so forth we will cover these things as we move further okay just for the first week we are going to cover some basic applications so anybody and everybody should be able to test this out as we did last time i'll send a message and i'll use i'll add the credential i should have had one but it doesn't show me let me add one more i'll select the account it will ask me for all the access let me select all this time and click on continue and once this is done let me close resource is message label draft thread we'll go with message operation is send two is coming from this one so i'll just drag and drop the email and the subject is here testing on app event and email type let's keep it text this time and i'll make it as expression and let's say hello space we need the name so i'll drag it and drop it over here and comma this is just a test email being sent from anaton flow yep. yeah anaton flow regards ritesh abcd right so once this is done we'll just go to add option click on append anaton attributes attribution and disable this execute step and this is already set once this is done we can click on save so this saves the uh, automation and i'll go over here and i'll just let's say 14th of december and let's call it as rakesh and uh, i'll put plugins at grid7.com and let's say same number if you go over here and go to executions we can see the second one and once we save this we can make it as active so we've added this particular number let me go back and make this as active so this keeps looping every minute so we'll wait for a minute and see if the third execution comes in as you can see this was when we fetch the information from google sheets so it shows us just the google sheet and if we see this one this is when we connected our uh, gmail action and that's why this has both of it so within a minute we should be able to see the third execution over here because we have added one more row of data so let's wait while we are waiting for this we can also see how long did the execution actually take okay this particular one took just 352 milliseconds and you can make it as full screen and you can use the zoom to fit if you have a larger automation then this will actually zoom in so that everything can fit in you can zoom from here zoom in zoom out you can also reset the zoom and so on and so forth that's available even in the editor screen over here right you could also use a tidy up which will basically uh, clean things up so if i have kept it like this and like this or something like that click on tidy up and it will come in same line or if you have a very complex thing it will actually make things look nicer let's go to execution auto refresh is on and there you go so we've got this particular one and if i open the google sheets we can see that we've got 
the second record as well and uh, if you go to second one it says it is sent okay so we got two records and we have sent two records now you might wonder why is somebody going to put in the data in google sheets okay it need not be manual it could also be via a form right so we will create a form so what i'll do is i'll go over here i'll go to tools create a new form and we have like an hidden automation test and here we can ask their name which could be a short answer we're asking them for email which could also be a short answer and we're asking them for their phone number which could also be a short answer if you want you can make it as required or you can leave it as is and let's click on publish uh, we have Publish form, responder specific people. Nope. So we can say a responder viewer, view restricted, anyone with a link. Right. And I'll click on done. And we can actually click on publish. This is published. So I'll click on link, shorten the URL, copy this from here. And let's go to incognito mode, test this out. So I'll try it with Megana and Megana at gmail.com phone number plus nine one some random number click on submit so once we are done we can come back to this one and actually the form submission is over here so i'm just going to go back to the google sheets and change the sheet name here oh for that i'll have to firstly make it as inactive and double click so submission is in form responses one. So I'll go back and I should be in the editor. I'll double click this and change this to form responses one. I'll click on fetch test event and node executed successfully. Come back, this is connected. Let's see if uh, it's connected properly. Yes, it is connected to email. This is connected to name and we are not using the phone number as of now. So that's completely fine. I'll just come out, click on save and this is completely fine so let's do one more submission and see if we are receiving the email i'm going to incognito mode i'm using the same form link and let's try this time with anoj anoj at gmail.com 89908990 and click on submit now this is submitted we can see the second response coming here the second response coming here and this should also execute in a short while so let me open up my email client that is gmail to show you that this email was actually sent this not the one and there you go email has been sent so as we can see hello manoj this is just a test email being sent from n8 and flow regards with age abcd and we have also got a response back telling this email is not found and that's the automation that we were talking about with on app trigger so this is very simple, isn't it? You just have to drag and drop, connect your accounts and tell what the platform has to do. And in this case, we checked how a new row when added into Google Sheets can be sent an email to that particular user, all without writing a single line of code. I hope you are enjoying this series. And if so, do not forget to bring your friends, families, and colleagues to the community to join this journey along with you. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.